One of the key aspects of the FRM program is the fact that we, we require you to, to learn risk management from one end to the other. It's not, it's not focused solely on credit risk or market risk or operational risk. There is no particular discipline. It really is looking at risk management from one end to the other. Um, and that is an important quality of the FRM program, but it also makes the program that much more challenging um, because a lot of people have experience and knowledge in a particular, uh, in a particular discipline, um, for example, credit risk, but they don't necessarily have that same exposure or level of, of, of knowledge about market risk or operational risk or, um, or investment management. Um, but we force that in the, in the FRM, and that, that uh, is an important feature of the program, but it also makes it more challenging. Um, which is why you, you really need to start preparing uh, early. Uh, but at the same time, um, that is one of the values of the FRM program is that it gives you that exposure to, to all dimensions of risk management. But it's also an, an, a, a feature of the FRM program that will help prepare you for a successful career in risk management in which you really do need to know uh, risk management across many different domains. The FRM exam development process is multifaceted. Um, first of all, it's guided by the FRM committee, which is a group of um, experienced risk practitioners chaired by Renee Stalls, who is a leading academic in the field. And so they are the sort of guiding, um, the guiding force behind the FRM examination development. We also conduct uh, a global job task analysis, which is a method by which we can determine the knowledge, skills, and ability that are required to perform effectively the role of a financial risk manager worldwide. So in combination with that, you know, with that input and the FRM committee, we develop an examination blueprint that covers the domain of knowledge that someone needs to have to be a financial risk manager. From there, we develop an examination blueprint and we then um, go through an extensive process of um, question development. Uh, we reach out to FRMs around the world for input. We work extensively with them. We do in-house work, and we really try to have the questions tied to the exam blueprint and reflective of practice. Job task analysis is what one can consider a best practice for uh, professional certification examinations. And what it essentially entails is, is determining what are the knowledge, skills, and ability required to do some particular uh, role um, in the world today. The operational process of developing it is you gather together subject matter experts um, who give um, input and guidance into the creation of a survey instrument. You vet that survey instrument extensively with other subject matter experts, and then you survey um, as much of the profession as you possibly can. In our case, we survey thousands of risk practitioners around the world, both FRMs and non-FRMs practicing uh, risk practitioners around the world through a survey process of determining what are the knowledge, skills, and ability required to be uh, an effective risk manager today. And then there's a, a process of tabulating all those results and rank ordering them in terms of what are things that are important, what are things that are done frequently, um, et cetera, in order to develop an exam, an exam blueprint. So that when GARP certifies someone, it is truly reflective of what the risk management community is demanding. People who have, uh, would get a benefit out of taking the FRM program and earning the designation aren't limited just to risk managers themselves. Although obviously the risk manager should, in our view, uh, be willing to show that they are a qualified individual based on effectively international standards as it relates to financial risk management and should seek the FRM exam designation. However, there's others within organizations that this is just as applicable for. People that, for instance, are dealing in technology at a senior level, or those who are dealing uh, in even sales, in many cases in the asset management side, for instance, uh, of the industry, those who are in risk 
roles within the asset management firms are now looking for the designation because in fact, they're going out and talking to clients of that asset manager and that designation allows them to at a very minimum say, I am competent based upon an objective standard to be able to explain to you what the risks are that our organization are dealing in and how we're handling those risks on a regular basis in order to protect your assets. Others that we're finding have a very high level of interest in the FRM program are regulators, for instance. And we're seeing an increased interest from those within the regulatory agencies around the globe to take the FRM exam. We're also finding interest from the insurance industry because it does cover many, many aspects of the insurance world. The insurance industry is involved with Solvency II, and the FRM exam covers, at a very big, basic level, a lot of the insurance concepts, but also it's very driven by derivatives, risk-based assets, and capital liquidity issues. Those types of issues are universal in scope, and there is a need for people who deal in those types of activities to be able to show that they do have that competency to deal in those activities. And the FRM exam and earning that designation allows them to objectively say that I do have that skill set and I am able to deal in this in an effective way. The FRM is wonderful for folks who are operating or, or want to operate in the field of risk management. It is also highly applicable for others in the financial services industry. It can give the individual a certain perspective, a certain risk aware perspective on situations, on instruments, on portfolios, et cetera, that can prove valuable in many types of situations. I mean, by looking at a trade, by looking at a new instrument, by looking at a business decision, possibly first from where is the risk? Can I identify what the risk is and is it being priced appropriately? Is it within the risk limits of my organization? Is it consistent with the risk appetite of the organization that I am uh, uh, working with or you know, working for? We feel that, that the knowledge, skills, and ability that, that you gain from the FRM program are directly applicable in giving someone the, the proper perspective to make those decisions, be they a salesperson, a trader, a portfolio manager, or a risk manager. When I joined GARP in 2002, the FRM program had approximately 2,000 registrants. Last year, which would be 2011, we had approximately 28,000 registrants. So the growth in the program uh, over that very short time frame has been rather dramatic. And that growth has been attributed to a number of different things. It's been attributed to the fact that the FRM program is designed by practitioners. And it's designed not only by that, those practitioners, but for practitioners. And it tests the ability of that individual as to whether they have an understanding of the basic concepts of financial risk management that are generally accepted throughout the world. Do they really understand enough about risk management to be an integral part of that organization and to provide advice to that organization's senior management team? And are they actually, do they have enough background and experience as much as we can assess that through an examination program to participate as a member of the senior organizational team within that organization? So the FRM exam has been growing dramatically not only in terms of registrations, but also in terms of organizations that send people to take the exam. What drives or what has driven the, the demand uh, for, for the certification is the same as what has really driven the evolution of the risk management profession. There have been a lot of, a lot of drivers in the financial markets in terms of the credit crisis uh, made more people, made people much more aware of risk management and the need for, for high quality and effective risk management. Um, a lot of the uh, regulatory initiatives are driving a lot of demand for risk management skills. Um, and we've seen all of that in, in the FRM uh, registrations where year after year the, the, the program continues to grow and it continues to grow globally. The 
to the individual, I would say the, the advantage is that they could have the um, assurance that the standards that they are being judged against are not a particular national standard, but a truly international professional standard. And so from the individual's perspective, they are being certified in a skill set that is globally accepted because it's globally determined. Our job task analysis, our committee members, our entire organizational structure is a global one. So they can feel assured that they are being tested against a global standard. From GARP's perspective, we have a desire to advance risk management globally. Financial firms are global. Financial um, problems and issues are global in nature. And so we feel that it's important to advance risk management, not in any one particular locale, but in the global financial system. Certified FRMs can and should be part of the solution to this global financial crisis. They are coming to the table, they are coming to the scene with knowledge, skills, and ability that should be directly applicable to the problems which they face. And we really feel that by helping to foster a risk-aware culture within organizations, that that will be critical to avoiding some of the disasters which we've seen in the past. And some of that just involves having a common dialogue, common concepts, a, a form of dialogue amongst risk managers and and from risk managers to business line managers, all the way up to the board of directors, you know, so that so that you have a risk aware um, culture in an organization, and so that by having that perspective on risk and risk management, we can hopefully avoid some of the problems which we've seen in the past, and we are hopeful and encourage FRMs to be at the vanguard of that effort. The advice I would give somebody who is considering taking the FRM exam is really to uh, make sure you begin preparing early enough. Uh, I've been involved with uh, the FRM exam development uh, for seven years now, and uh, I can say um, without question that it is, a, it is a demanding and challenging exam. There is no question. One of, one of the nice things about the program, as well as one of the, the difficult things about the program, is that it is a broad program. We're asking you to, to uh, to learn risk management from one end to the other. It's not focused solely on credit risk or market risk or operational risk or, you know, it, it's across the board. And so uh, a lot of people have a lot of expertise uh, in a lot of cases in one domain. Uh, we're asking you um, to, to learn it in all domains. And so um, there is a lot of material and it is, it, it is a hard exam without question. Um, and so I would encourage you to, uh, to, to begin the preparation early. I would also point out that I do, I, I think it's a very valuable exercise in the sense that um, getting that exposure to, uh, to all the different domains of risk management is very valuable, even if what you're doing currently is focused solely on a particular discipline like credit risk. Um, it's good for you to have a solid understanding of uh, of market risk, operational risk, and, and, and again and beyond, in particular like the current issues, um, so that you you start to, to broaden your own perspective um, and, and set yourself up for uh, a better future in the risk management space.